Sound spades. And if you're a boom operator, a sound mixer, maybe even a sound utility, and you like to have every possible trick up your sleeve just in case, then pay close attention. And I do mean close attention to this video because I'm going to be sharing with you a product that you might have heard of before. You might have even seen one, but if you've ever used one, believe me, you're going to want one. Full disclosure, Ambient did send me this product in exchange for a fair review, and I get to keep it following the review, but I'm not going to allow it to affect my opinion, so you can expect this to be a fair and honest review. In case you're thinking, uh, Alan, you're barely into this video and you've already contradicted yourself. No, I haven't. Let me explain why. Over two and a half years ago when Ambient first sent me this product, I looked at it and said, this is cool. I can imagine myself maybe using it once in a blue moon, once or twice a year at most, and it'll probably live the rest of its life on the sound trailer waiting for its next use. But boy, did I underestimate the amount of uses this thing has. And truth be known, that's the reason why it's taken me so long to actually review this thing, because most products you're sent, you might test for a week or two, maybe even a solid month to get a good grasp of it, its pluses, its minus, pros, cons, all that kind of thing, and that way you can do a fair and honest review. But with this product, you don't use it on set every day. And as soon as I went to review it, I found another use for it that day on set. So I said, okay, I'm going to delay a couple of weeks. And then the day I scheduled to do the review that night, I went to work again and found yet another use for it. And then the same thing happened again. So I said, okay, I'm going to hold off on this for a couple of months and then I'll review it. And then I found another use and then another and then another. And now you should see my list of all potential uses for it. Enough chatter. Let's look at it already. This is the Ambient QDS, nicknamed the Dipstick. It is an articulated boom segment that mounts to the end of any boom pole with a 3816 thread on the end of it. And it allows you to add a bend to the end of your boom pole while extending it out a full meter if you would like to. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, okay, <laughs> how is that going to be useful? Well, I'm glad you asked. Whenever you're shooting exteriors, you got to pay close attention when you're booming to where the sun is. Because if you are booming in line with the sun like Hugo is right now, then you're going to end up shadowing the actors and you're going to get called out from everybody at Video Village and the camera operators, the ACs, everyone. And this is actually going against everything he knows because he is a boom operator. So why don't you clear the sun and show people what it would actually be like if you were doing it for real. But what if booming from this side wasn't an option and you had to boom from this side? Well, you would think that that's normally the way you would do it is downstream of the sun so that way you're always looking into the brightest light around right but not in this case because there are signs that are in his way let's just say that hugo was not able to boom from this side at all he had to boom from this side there are signs in the way he's having to hop over the signs giving us a very inconsistent boom track and that's not good but what are your options here you can't boom from this side let's say there's a creek there what do you do Hugo is no longer to my left hand side, now he's to my right. And you may be asking, how is he booming from over there? The signs were in the way. Well, let me widen out and show you. He is using the articulated segment by Ambient, also nicknamed the dipstick. It's actually quite handy. It extends and contracts the same way as any QP boom pole. And it even has that coloring on the end. Now, I want to show you that it has this little protractor thing on the end, allowing you to figure out the exact angle you want on it. Now, if you're looking at it and thinking, I use an internally straight cable boom, like maybe a QP boom pole. And you say, well, gee, how in the world can I possibly put this on the end of my boom pole without running an extra little cable on the outside? Well, I figured out a solution for that. As someone that's used an internal straight cable on his boom pole for well over a decade and now finds myself more than often using a transmitter on the microphone end of a boom pole, I had to find a solution that would allow me to switch back and forth with a dipstick regardless of who I was working with, day playing, or full-time show. And I found that solution using other ambient products. The first is an ambient XLR tip. This little bitty piece of metal goes on the inside of a Neutrik NCMX connector. If you open it up, you thread the larger of the two sides on the end of this, and then on the other end, you connect it up to the ambient QDS on the side with a protractor style adjustment on the end. And you do so with a quick release, which also is sold by Ambient. You only need about one third of a meter or about one foot of coiled XLR cable to go around the outside of this segment. But you do need as much straight cable on the end as you would normally want to have at the end of your boom pole segments. You could use elastic bands or something to connect this up to the end of the ambient QDS. But what I always do is take the last loop and stick it through the end of this boom segment. Do this very carefully and when you're done, take the end of the connector and thread it through that loop. And when you're done, you have just enough of a pigtail to make yourself happy. And as for all this extra slack, simply twist the boom pole around and it all pulls right on in. 
And of course, it wouldn't be complete unless you had an ambient quick release on the end. When it's all said and done, you'll realize that there is no slap from this XLR coiled cable on this segment of a boom pole. And you can extend it out however long you want to, whenever you want to as well. And because it has the same cabling on this end as it does this end, you can mount it to the end of your boom pole whenever you want to and however you want to, hot swapping your microphone, and it is a true quick release system. Now, you may have seen an articulated segment built into a boom pole before. For example, on the KTEC KA113CCR, as demonstrated by Jared Elkin on his channel, and I'm using this clip with his permission. The boom pole has five locking positions, including the straightening position at the elbow joint. Which can be used to hold the boom pole in any manner of positions. And when all is said and done, the boom pole collapses to a small and very manageable size. As cool as it is to see an articulated boom in action, it is not as versatile as adding the QDS to one of your existing boom pole is now. Let me explain why. If you want to collapse down the articulated boom all the way, it's still going to be about this tall. And if you want to collapse it and completely get that articulated segment out of the way, it folds down onto the wrong end of the boom pole. Thus, extending it out is going to put the microphone where your hands are. And you can only extend it out in small segments and forget about it if you need a lot of length. But with a QDS on the end of your boom pole, you can simply remove it when you're not wanting to use it. The QDS can be used in many, many, many different ways, even as a shorty boom pole. You know how you can adjust the angles of a microphone at the end of your boom pole to get the exact right angle on the actors? Well, imagine adding in an articulated segment as well. I was able to use this segment to angle around a cabinet in a kitchen when lighting and camera angles wouldn't allow me to be where I wanted to be, and I could still angle back and get the actors on axis while peeking underneath the cabinets. That's something I couldn't do without this thing. I've also been in many circumstances when I would need to be up on a ladder, but there wasn't enough room for a ladder and so I was going to be SOL, except for the fact that I had this articulated segment. I could get back far enough, I could angle in from the sky without being on a ladder and still get everyone I needed to on set. And that right there is completely awesome. Working on an exterior for a TV show called Dynasty, there was only one place for me to stand because of the camera angles and sun positioning. And there was not enough room for a ladder, but because I had the articulated segment, I was able to start with the pole all the way up, carry the actors around a corner. When they opened up the door to the van they were getting in, I was on the other side of that door right over top of the actors, and you never saw me in the reflections, and I carried them until the point where my plant on the inside of the van picked them up. That was cool. And in case you're thinking there's no way you could possibly avoid a reflection on a vehicle using the articulated segment, I'll demonstrate it. So Hugo is right now showing you that there is really no good angle to come in on when you're trying to boom around a car. He's walking completely around behind the car and at every single angle. And if you notice, there's reflections all over this car, no matter which way he's coming in from. Because cars are terrible to shoot around as a boom operator, you definitely know this. No boom operator likes to shoot anywhere near a car because all it is is a reflection haven. Everything is reflected into the camera lens. It's a mirror. But if you use an articulated segment coming in from straight overhead, sometimes you can defeat them. Sometimes I've used a lasty band or a rubber band to secure the connector to the side of the quick release. That way I don't have to go through the whole process of uncabling this just for a day playing opportunity when I have to put the transmitter on the end of a boom. Because the QDS moves from pole to pole, it is very easy for you to get the exact amount of length you need on the end of your boom pole before you add the articulated segment so you don't have to carry extra pole that you don't need. And this comes in handy if you ever extend completely vertical and then articulate over for something like a superhero shot. Even if a super techno crane comes in, you don't need to worry about it because you're not actually angling up for it. You're completely square. That comes in handy too. I don't have a whole lot of pictures I can show you of me using the articulated segment in action because I'm the boom operator and I can't take pictures of myself while I'm booming. And second of all, there's this little thing called an NDA. But let it be said, I have found so many uses for this thing and I'm going to start to list them on the side for the rest of this video. So what do I think of the ambient QDS? Do I need to say it? Two humongous thumbs up from me here on Soundspeeds. 
For $212 at the time of this video, I think this thing is an absolute steal. You will not realize how many things you will use it for until you have one. You don't need to be on ladders nearly as much, and you can actually move around with the segment coming in from the sky, defeating a whole bunch of lights. Or you could boom over top of a second boom and not have them get in your way at all, or vice versa. I tell you, this thing is amazing and I absolutely love it. So I definitely think you should get one. So call a specialty sound shop and get one for yourself. One last thing, a very strong recommendation. Keep the smallest section of your boom pole inside the pole. It's designed to support a couple of pounds of microphone suspension and wind protection, but not an entire meter of extra pole plus all of that weight. The second smallest section of your boom pole is much stronger and has a much better chance of supporting it all, so don't get greedy. But if you absolutely must take out the smallest section, be very careful and leave at least a foot or more inside the boom. So that is the reason why it took so long to actually do this review, because I wanted to do the QDS justice. And I think I finally did in this video. And sorry to Ambient that it took two and a half plus years for me to actually do it. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds. And be sure to tune in the future for more interesting products that you're going to want to get if you're in production sound and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.